Hey, Tech Buyers Guru here at the Thermal Take booth at CES 2019. I'm going to show off some of these cases here they have on display and then show you some of the accessories that they're announcing here at CES. Very popular case for uh, micro ATX lovers is the Level 20 VT. This is proving very popular with custom builders. As you can see, it allows you to really show off your system from just about every angle, even more than your typical ATX case. Uh, just launched was the Level 20 MT uh, 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 Level 20 MT ARGB at $100. This comes with dual tempered glass panels and ARGB fans up front. It has a faux aluminum finish. It's kind of matched the higher end Level 20 systems that use a, a sandblasted aluminum. Here's the much bigger level, level 20 XT, C copying the form fact or f the design of the level 20 VT and punching up a size or two. And then for tw the 20th anniversary of thermal take, we have the level 20 full tower chassis. Of course, it has those three chambers, one for your custom liquid cooling, one for your power supply, and one for your system. Here it is in blue, what they're calling Miami blue, kind of an art deco color. What Thermaltake is showing here is actually its ability to give you different paint colors and kind of paint styles. So this is kind of a glossy, almost like an enamel paint. It looks very, very cool. This is a the new A700. This follows on the A500, which is over here, uh, launched a few months ago. Uh, that's an aluminum chassis, and so is the uh, A700, but it's punched out widthwise. So that's about as wide as your level 20 systems, as you can see. So that's for people who want, you know, the, the big daddy system, but with kind of a, uh, more subdued aesthetics of that solid aluminum front panel. Now in between the two cases is something really interesting. We have the S series, the S500. What they're doing here is bringing the aesthetics of the aluminum line down to a lower price point by going with steel panels. So the front is a is kind of replicating the sandblasted look, but out of uh, black painted steel. And this is going to come at 150 as opposed to the 200 price point of the aluminum model. The other thing that you do lose versus the aluminum is the hinged door. So there you can see that hinged door on the A500. The S500 will only use, will just use kind of a pull out door. It pull, pulls out the back like a standard case panel. This is magnetically attached, so it's actually pretty hard to open. I may, there's a little, ah, I see, there's a little thumb. It's still pretty hard. Those magnets, you know, you don't actually, there is a latch here you, that you can turn to lock it. But I'll tell you, unless you're transporting it, this thing will not open. It actually takes a lot of force to release those magnets. So that glass panel will stay closed when you're using your system. Big announcement here at CS for Thermaltake is its new liquid cool memory. And it's not just selling the coolers. It's selling the RAM sticks. This is Thermaltake branded RAM. You can't buy it separately yet, but it looks pretty darn cool. Maybe Thermaltake will start actually selling the RAM on its own. But when you buy that kit, you're getting two or four sticks of eight gigabyte RAM running at 3,200 megahertz with a liquid cooler. Now I did ask, can you run these 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 liquid reservoirs without the actual pump and, and hoses? And they said it's not really recommended. So this is actually the recommended setup. So you have those, you have those RGB uh, modules hooked up with liquid, all right, on this side. Here they're showing it not operating. So this is probably not the recommended way, although that is an operating system. You're probably not going to want to leave it uncooled. Uh, or if you do, you're going to have to leave it open. You can't fill it with liquid if there's no uh, movement of that uh, liquid through a reservoir. Also on display, is their new line of Tough Power RGB PSUs. You can see how this looks in a chassis like this very popular P90. So when you can actually see that power supply, it adds a lot to the aesthetics of the system. You can see the lighting not only through the fan grill, but also on the side panel. It's controllable two ways with their, their, their PF1 series. You control it uh, via the motherboard. So there's actually a, link, a USB link to the motherboard. 
And with their higher-end iRGB series, you control it with their own sync box. And the advantage you get with using Thermaltake's proprietary design is that you can also monitor temperatures, modify fan curves, and also take a look at total wattage and, and, and uh, energy use. So the iRGB is going to be available at the, at the gold level at 750, 850, and 1,000 watts. And the, the PF1, which is there, uh, that uses the motherboard controls, is 850, 1050, or 1200 watts at the platinum level, and 650, 750, or 850 at the gold level. These are very, very good looking PSUs. I really like that fan grill, even when the lights are off. It's a pretty sweet looking fan and system. It all goes together well. I think those fan blades are kind of a kind of like a frosted gray. It looks really, really cool even when it's off. Also new on the show floor from Thermaltake is the brand new water 3.0360 ARGB sink. This replaces the original water 3.0, which is a top selling SKU for Thermaltake. What you're getting here is the pump design from the upmarket flow, which usually costs about $50 more, plus ARGB fans. So you get kind of the best of both worlds. You get the water 3.0 price point, very competitive uh, in the liquid cooling market with the ARGB design of the more expensive premium flow model. And the really cool thing about this that I really like is that it syncs with motherboards. So it's not using the proprietary system that Thermaltake has for a lot of its fans and coolers. This can sync to a motherboard control, which all mother modern motherboards have. So we really like this and we're trying to get one of these in for review.